I hate this movie. This is the worst film I've ever seen. No hyperbole. Shark Exorcist is actually the most terrible piece of shit in this series so far. I am truly baffled at the filmmaker's ability to blow all expectations of god-awful, pathetically lazy filmmaking out of the shark-infested water. Whatever. An utter failure on every single level, Shark Exorcist trips over itself and quickly spirals into one of the most apathetic, embarrassing, unfunny, inept, and shoddy attempts at filmmaking I've ever had the displeasure of witnessing. It takes a certain level of bumbling incompetence to achieve something like this. I'll meet you right now! Uh. I'm aware that when I say this is probably the worst movie in the search for the worst, that it comes with the expectation of this somehow being worse than movies such as The Amazing Bulk or The Garbage Pail Kids. But trust me, I'm going to do my very damned best to break it down and convince you exactly why every single element of this trash is a miscarriage of entertainment. Should I even be giving this film the time of day? Should I even be justifying its existence by treating it as such? Probably not, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Let me just set the scene before plunging into the depths of this hellish picture. After I reviewed the also terrible Amazing Bulk, a review I would highly recommend you also check out, the production company named Wild Eye Releasing got in touch with me via email. Surprisingly enough, they thanked me for my review, saying that it helped get the word out despite the scathing contempt I showed towards it, and offered to send me a custom bulk bust, which I gladly accepted. It's a neat little thing. This reminds me of the horrors I've experienced. But sneakily packed inside the package was an extra unintended Surprise. As it turns out, one of the executives at Wild Eye had recently had a tumor removed. I am very glad to announce that they survived the operation and are very much on the road to a full recovery, and kindly must have placed their tumor inside the package as a special gift for, for me. It admittedly is quite strange that the tumor took the form of a B-movie called Shark Exorcist, but I wasn't going to complain. After all, I got a tumor in the post for free. So I thought to myself, ha! <laughs> That's cute, if not just the tiniest bit desperate. Fine, I'll go ahead and review this other garbage movie you've released. I mean, the cover looks pretty neat. This could be some hilarious on-the-nose exploitation. How bad could it be? Just how bad could it be? Ain't that where them people got killed? Something about a shark? I'm an idiot. I should have seen this coming. The gods warned me about these fucking shark movies. If shark is in the title, it's going to be atrocious, that's just a fact. Did Jurassic Shark teach me nothing? But it's too late now. You're watching this video, so I already committed endless hours into studying and analyzing every single frame. I've spent days on end combing through my research, and I've managed to boil down my conclusion of what Shark Exorcist represents to me into one single easy to digest word. This word, of course, being... That's not a word. What do you mean that's not a word? And it's just a collection of disgustingly loud mouth noises. Yeah, that's what I said. Well, you see, no word in the English language can summarize my <laughs> hatred for this movie. And this <laughs> is simply the only way I can convey my feelings across to you. And by now, you're probably realizing that I've been avoiding actually talking about the intricacies of the movie itself. And you're right. But I think it's time. I've warmed up now. My notes are complete, I'm in the right mood, I've taken my anxiety medication to stop this film literally making my heart explode from frustration. Let's start by looking at the details of the plot. This video has more of a plot than the fucking movie does. Yeah! 
telling a story shouldn't be that hard. I know making a movie isn't easy at all, but telling a story is simply ingrained into human nature. It's what we're best at, really. What do we talk to each other about? About how there was that cashier that was rude to us that one time? Or that memory you have with a friend? Or how you're super excited about something that you've been planning for months and months? The point is, you'd think for a world of people who do nothing but tell stories to each other nearly every day of our lives, directors and writers such as Donald Farmer, who was both director and writer on Shark Exorcist, would have a bit more of a fucking clue. Because you see, Shark Exorcist has no story. There is no through line, no focus, no goal, no characters, no artistic value, no themes, no structure, no point. I really do not understand how or what the thought process behind something like Shark Exorcist was. What is trying to be achieved? I don't know, I couldn't tell you. From the DVD cover and the plot summaries on IMDb and elsewhere, it seems obvious. You'd assume it would be a tongue-in-cheek, cheap exploitation B-movie riding off the coattails of various shark movies and horror films which are popular at the time. I'm not asking for much, I'm really not. I know low-budget filmmaking is not easy, but that's also not an excuse. You see it all the time with these trashy movies. The excuse that it's okay okay because they're not being fed money from a studio, it's all independent, we're independent! But when you're being outshined left and right, even on places like YouTube, which offers free entertainment by a myriad of incredibly talented people with production values and artistry far beyond anything you're capable of doing in your movie that you're actually charging money for, then I say the floodgates are open for every single scrap of criticism <laughs> that gets thrown your way, buddy boy. This is the way the movie goes, okay? I'm going to refrain from talking about technical aspects until a little later, so I can really highlight how nothing makes any sense whatsoever. The reason I have to break this down so much is because there is something shitty and awful in every single shot. No joke. The opening sequence is of a nun walking through a graveyard in broad daylight. There is no atmosphere or mood because of the time of day they chose to film. She wanders over to the shoreline where a different woman aggressively confronts her for something, but gets stabbed to death. Again, in broad daylight, with a busy road only a few number of meters away. Truly embarrassing. The nun proceeds to drag the victim into the ocean as some kind of demonic sacrifice, where her vocal cords are stressed to the max because of how loud the ocean must be, and they needed to make sure the cheap mic could pick up the audio. Lord Satan, accept my sacrifice! There's an awkward cut to a bad CG, probably stock animated, let's be honest, shark who does nothing. Nothing at all. This movie was released in 2015. <laughs> The shark swims towards the camera and it fades to black. Title card. The intro credits have the ZAT style, unrelated stock footage. It's not unrelated in terms of sharks and jellyfish being irrelevant to the plot, but more that any sense of style or mood is lost when it's nothing but extremely obvious stock footage. Cut to a year later where we're introduced to the obnoxious three main people in the movie. I'm intentionally avoiding referring to them as characters, because they are not. 100 degrees outside and this car's got no air conditioning. Real nice. I like it hot. Well, you're weird. Every single interaction between two or more humans is the most stilted, awkward, and unnatural exchange you could ever possibly imagine in a movie. Well, I don't know why I'm going. The three women, on this wonderful overcast day, are going to tan by the lake, because this is a movie with shark in the title, and we need an excuse for scantily clad beach babes. I know I said I wouldn't talk about technical aspects just yet, but this shot here pisses me off too much to not mention it right now. The most egregious aspect is that the camera is nearly always handheld and shaky, which would be fine if there was a reason for it. There simply isn't. This shot would work 100 times better if the camera was mounted on a tripod and was still, almost to reflect how everything seems calm and untouched just like the water, which would mean when she inevitably gets attacked, the jump to a handheld viewpoint could help accentuate the sudden unorganized chaos of the scene. But instead, we just get this messy, tasteless, and distracting visual nightmare. At least whoever's holding the camera seems to understand the rule of thirds, sort of, which is something, I guess. The woman casually attempts to swim away from the shark, which is clumsily spliced in every few seconds, which is the exact same reused shot from earlier, by the way. But she does get attacked, or at least it's implied that she's attacked, with a few random shots of bad shark CG interlaced with her flailing around in the shallow water like a fucking beached fish. She doesn't die, though. Her friends conveniently retrieve her from the shallows, where she proceeds to panic. Stay with me. Stay with me. About the ketchup the cameraman spilt on her. I mean, I can only guess that's what happened because 
that is not a shark bite. Once the Oscar-winning performances are over, it cuts to black, where the most telling scene in the entire movie is highlighted. Now, I could be wrong, but it seems like these shots were filmed in a real active hospital in secret. Yeah. At first, I admit, I was impressed because I thought this was a real hospital set. Ooh. Oh shit, they've actually got a hospital set thing. This looks like a real hospital. But of course not, this is Shark Exorcist we're talking about. That would be way too much money and effort. You don't see a single character who's actually in the movie in this hospital. He almost definitely just walked into a hospital and secretly filmed it. Now the worst actress in the entire movie is in an arcade for no reason other than because they found a machine with sea creatures on it. And look, wow, Shark is in the title of this movie. Aren't sharks in the sea too? She leaves with her friend and the scene has no point. They sit on a bench and inform us, the audience, that the girl who was bitten has miraculously healed from the shark bite. Why? I just got back from the hospital. Cool. Why haven't you been there to see Allie? Just because. Okay, well I thought that you might want to know that she got released today because apparently she got miraculously healed from the shark bite. Right, hang on, hang on. I just need to pause this for a second to, 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 to take a break to rest my brain, because the scene that's about to ensue is the most baffling part of this movie. <sighs> okay, I'm ready. Let's do it. We're introduced to this woman who is supposed to be presenting some fake reality TV show about paranormal investigation called Ghost Whackers. Fucking whack your ghost in a minute, cunt. They show the camera guy of the guy who's filming the show inside of this movie that we're watching, who gives her the thumbs up to say that she's doing a good job. But then it arbitrarily cuts to the other way round, where the woman is looking at the cameraman, but for no reason at all other than because the film has no direction or any idea what to do. She stares straight into the camera and addresses the audience, completely breaking the fourth wall. I mean, it would make sense if that guy filming the show inside of the movie wasn't there, I guess, or if she was still looking at him, but instead I'm just horribly confused and a bit scared. Was there any direction to the scene? Like, what the fuck? A giant shark is feeding on the swimmers. The scene ends with her writhing around on the floor for some reason. It's truly puzzling. I will eat your flesh and swallow your souls! We're reintroduced to the bitch who was attacked by the shark. Except I'm left thinking she has major brain damage from the attack because she's holding her hand out to hitchhike without any cars around. Eventually she does happen to stumble across a porn actor in a 4x4 who tries to finger her pussy like they just met and he's just trying to finger her. But she she's not into that. But that's okay though, because it transitions to them basically naked in a lake, getting getting each other nice and wet and flirting, so yeah. Unlucky for the porn actor man, the woman sinks underwater and disappears, and, and then a shark eats him. Again, this is only implied because we don't see anything at all. Like, come on, how could a shark even fit here? The water barely goes up to his waist. 20 minutes in and we're finally introduced to the religious side of this movie. Where the priest gets Wait, hang on. Isn't that the same actor as the guy who just got killed mere seconds ago? <sighs> the urge to just stop this video right here. I've got- I've got to fight it so fucking hard! The excuse is that the priest gets a letter saying that it was his brother who was killed by the shark. It is with a heavy heart that I must inform you of the death of your brother. The scene has no real point or merit on its own. Moving on. Back to these dumb motherfuckers, where she's still looking at the wrong camera and it makes no sense. An armored skeptic runs over and explains why ghosts are dumb and it's very graceless and bad. Another dumb and pointless scene that has no point and is dumb. Did I mention that it's dumb and pointless? Back to the priest for the only kind of good looking shot in the entire movie. Like if I took a still from this right now, I could actually trick you into believing that this is from something that isn't complete shit. It looks like at this point in the production they invested in a tripod and the camera motion is relatively fluid. They also filmed at the correct time of day for the natural lighting to not look like utter, 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 utter shit. It is my humble opinion that all of these positives I just listed were achieved by complete accident because nothing of this quality happens again. Now there's a new scene with a bunch of new characters in a graveyard that means absolutely nothing. I'll quickly fast forward the footage to show you what happens, but I have no clue what it means or why it was in this movie. <laughs> No, 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 no. I forgot about this part. I forgot about this fucking part. I, I really want to skip it. I really want, I really want to skip. I don't, 
I really don't want to tell you about it, but at the same time I have to. A 35 year old woman in a children's park is either pretending to be a child or a mentally disabled person. I'm not trying to be funny with edgy insults there, but there is no other explanation for this behavior. <laughs> This right here, this fucking shot right here is the number one reason this goddamn movie is my least favorite of the bunch. I mean, the rest is bad. The rest of this movie is fucking bad, real bad. But when your movie is so backwards that this is how you think people go down fucking slides. Nah, mm -mm. I am, I am not having it. Not this time. Fuck you, movie. Fuck you. Hi, I see you here. Wanna play? I like your sharks. Me too, sharks are so cool. Please don't eat me! Uh, I'll meet you right now! Uh. Awkward. So awkward. I have never been more uncomfortable. So what do you like to do, Allie? I like to get wet. I like to get wet. Okay, scratch that. I have officially been more uncomfortable. The child, I guess, leads the shark bite lady to a swimming pool at night time. Surprise! You said you like to get wet! Where she undresses in front of this mentally handicapped child, and it's shot like a fucking porno. Literally to the point where she forgets she's in a movie and she looks straight into the camera, like a porno slut who's showing off her body. <laughs> The other girl gets into the pool with her, then the shark bite lady does her usual shit and disappears. But right before the shark attack's gonna happen... <coughs> yeah. She wakes up from a dream. N none of that scene just happened. It was 100% pointless. Nothing was learnt or conveyed. It's the dictionary definition of fucking pointless. This film is made up of nothing but fuck this movie moments, I swear to god. There's another scene with a ghost woman, who squirms around on the floor like an unlucky insect who's been defaced by a toddler. Oh, come inside me! I couldn't tell you if I was watching a weird porno or not at this point. This scene has no point, and conveys absolutely nothing. Are you starting to see a trend here? There's another shark attack scene that has no setup, no payoff, and it comes out of nowhere. But I'm gonna gloss over this because it has no bearing on anything else that happens in the movie. <laughs> Let's be real though, not a single scene actually advances anything. It's not like this is a special case or anything. This next bit is the fucking weirdest shit you've ever seen. I guess the ghost whacker lady is possessed now. She holds her hair back as she pukes on someone. <laughs> because I guess that's what possessed people do. Guy running for five minutes. Guy running for five minutes. This character we've never been introduced to before. Runs around for five minutes, literally five minutes, and finds the corpse of one of the blonde woman's victims and pukes himself silly. Oh god. She's still kinda hot. I'd still do her. She's still kinda hot. I'd still do her. You realize that's a corpse, right? Corpse meaning dead body. Like this is a murder. That's a human life that's been lost. And that's what's on your mind right now. I guess it really is true that all men are pigs. Hey look, it's three more characters we've never seen before being introduced 35 minutes into the movie. The middle one is organizing one of those stupid American sorority challenge things and gets the other two girls to stand in water that's below their knees, like take note that it's below their knees. What a challenge, what an extreme challenge that's so difficult and taxing. But let's give credit where credit is due. This scene, this scene is fucking genius, I tell you, because it's like a whole bait and switch scenario. You're expecting the girls in the shallow water to get eaten because that's how sharks work, right? But instead, but instead, get this, the girl on the pier gets munched. We are going to do this. What about you, Holly? It's okay to be scared. I won't tell anyone you're just a big pussy. So this shark attack is composed of three shots. Again, all of the violence is implied. The initial shot is of the girl casually standing there leaning on the rail. The actual shot of the attack, if I slow it down and you look really carefully, is of an unrelated woman being eaten by a shark. I guess that's to try and hide the atrocious visual effects. Right, before we move on, I'm just going to ask you, the audience, a question about the scene that just transpired. In your 
honest and humble opinion, do you think that this shark murder scene has a point, advances the plot, and or conveys something important to the movie? I'll ask again. Is this scene A, completely meaningless filler that has no point, doesn't advance the plot and adds nothing to the movie, or B, is this scene completely meaningless filler that has no point, doesn't advance the plot, and adds nothing to the movie? The porn star who's dressed up as a priest goes to investigate into the shark attack from earlier because movie. He questions the victim's friend and the mystery continues to a fun fair that's in town and has no relevance to anything. One of the blonde girls from earlier is there with some boy with never been introduced to. And the possessed woman who loves getting wet, I, like to get wet. I guess is stalking them. There's basically no audio in this scene. I guess because the bass audio of the funfair was too loud. <laughs> Instead, we have to endure a seemingly endless mix of this film's atrocious soundtrack. Well, never thought I'd ever see a porn star priest walking through a colourful fun fair at night. Never say never, I guess. For some reason, the possessed woman now has these little demon teeth. When I first saw this on the cover of the DVD, I was pretty excited for how it'd look in the movie. Pretty disappointed, not gonna lie. Um, uh, I, I have no idea at all what, what any of that was supposed to be. I guess they broke up? Are these humans? Who are these people? Unfortunately for the fella, he basically gets killed by the vampire? Oh shit! <laughs> what is going on? The priest catches the vampire feasting and screams. Demon! Price commands you. Pearl Price commands you. I mean, close enough. Right. So the priest ties the girl to a tree and shoves a cross in her face because that's how exorcisms work in in the movies. The only somewhat goofy and entertaining thing that happens in the entire movie transpires, and it's just a much more worse aurora scene than The Exorcist. <laughs> So I guess because he's covered in puke, it makes the priest mad, so then he strangles her. But I guess she wasn't secured very well because she's just free now. Then he kisses the priest and his eyes go red. And a shark falls out of the sky from a portal and kills everybody. Cuts to black, but the film is somehow still not over. We're introduced to yet another new character who drives to a lake by herself on an overcast day to sunbathe. Why she chose this area in particular to sunbathe, I'll never know. I mean, it's fucking gross. Look at him. She gets undressed and it's tasteless. Then, in the most because movie reveal I've ever seen, some guy who we who we never find out about, by the way, comes out from hiding behind a tree and takes a bunch of creep shots of her. Then, after taking all of these pictures of her, he stands right over her and has a double check through all of them to make sure they're suitably creepy. Then he leaves and he's never seen again. Not one. Not one single bit of any of that had any point whatsoever. Not one fucking point. No relevance. You could edit that out and nothing would be lost. Nothing. She gets up from sunbathing and then... <laughs> It's the nun from the beginning! I remember you! Who am I kidding, who is she? Who violently stabs her to death for some reason. But then, explicably, I think the girl who got killed at the beginning suddenly rises from the lake and battles the nun into the water in broad daylight with boats everywhere. I guess this is symmetry for the scene at the beginning, like a bookend. I really don't know. And don't forget the shark gameplay that is spliced in for no reason. I have no idea what's going on. We go back to two of the girls from the beginning. I guess we find out that this one somehow survived the shark warping out of the portal in the sky. Please tell me what's wrong. You don't want to know. Yes, yes I really do. Forgive me. Fuck you, fuck you, s fuck you so hard. She didn't even, she didn't even fucking jump in the water. They like threw a stone in. Okay, so you'd think that seems like the ending, right? Wrong. After the credits play, there's this scene in an aquarium where nothing happens and also the weirdest fucking shit you've ever seen. 
And this shit right here. This shit. It goes on for nearly seven fucking minutes! Without this scene, without this scene right here, I could have forgiven the movie and moved on with my life. But this proves to me. This scene proves to me that the filmmakers wanted me to fucking hate this pile of shit, pathetic excuse for entertainment. But wait. <laughs> but wait, 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 wait. There is more. There is more. More credits are shown. More credits are shown. And there's another, another after credit scene, which means nothing and makes no sense. Fuck you. This movie is so incompetent that I actually have to dedicate an entire section to how it fails technically on nearly every level. First off, this film has no structure, making this review extremely hard to make. I feel like my descriptions and pacing have been lacking, but seriously, this film is completely incomprehensible. None of it makes any sense. In comparison, and I really cannot believe I'm saying this, I may regret this later, but the amazing bulk actually makes more sense than this movie. At least I could tell you the story of The Amazing Bulk. I've been sat here talking about this film, literally trying to convey the story to you that I've prepared in advance, and I still couldn't tell you the actual plotting of the movie. It's just a bunch of scenes. It's just a bunch of fucking scenes. Nothing is linked, characters come and go seemingly at random. It just ends. It's all pointless filler that's just long enough to be slapped onto a DVD and sold with a stupid name. IMDB estimates the budget of this movie being $300,000? Which I find extremely difficult to believe, based on the quality of what I just showed you. Now, I'm not saying that this is true because I have no evidence whatsoever, but this film does come across to me like some kind of cynical tax dodge or money laundering scheme. I don't know. I almost hope it is. Then at least there would be a reason for how bad this is. It's extremely, extremely difficult to pinpoint everything this film does wrong when it would simply be easier to list off the fleeting things that are done properly. Let's quickly do that. Okay, what, what does this film do right? Um, I guess the camera is on, the lens cover was taken off, there are those black bars to trick you into thinking it's cinematic. Uh... It's in color. That's about it. That, that's all I can think of. Now let me just quickly list some of the most egregious shit I didn't mention earlier for the sake of focus. <laughs> For some reason, there's a bizarre emphasis on Dutch angles, which is when the camera is set to an angle on its roll axis, with the vertical lines at an angle to the side of the frame. As far as I can tell, this is an accident, or the person filming only had one leg. There was one instance where the camera morphed into a Dutch angle, and it looked so dumb and so terrible. All the camera work is bad, and constantly reminds you that this guy is probably filming everything. It's beyond amateur. Everything's amateur. From the acting to the set locations. I use the word set very lightly. Because there's not a single set. Everything's filmed on location. There is no narrative. Nothing happens for any reason that makes any sense. It's driven by the idea of an and then story. And then a nun appears and stabs somebody. And then a woman gets creeped on. And then a portal drops a shark out of the sky. And then you get the idea. The sound in particular is atrocious. There is a scene with the priest where he's dubbed for some reason, and somehow they managed to completely fuck up the sink with his mouth movements. I swear to you, I have not messed around with this footage like this is actually in the movie like this. Watch. Uh, it was kept quiet. That's why I'm concerned for your friend. Just wondering if this is the same shark that attacked her normally, but we're not talking about a normal shark here. That's why I'm concerned for Allie. Yes? Yes? At random intervals, you can actually hear the cameraman breathing, because I guess he's so fat that he's out of breath. So... <laughs> Do you hear someone breathing in the background? Wait, so there's a shark in the water? I don't know. Maybe it got bored and swam. Yes! That's what you got. What the fuck is that? <laughs> You hear that plane? Yeah. <laughs> There's literally a plane in the in the background. He's breathing again. Why? <laughs> you, can, you can just hear him breathing really heavily. You I can I see I a think... fucking nipple. That's why. Oh yeah, He's got a boner. So he's like, oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Ultimately, I despise this film. I may sound unenthused, but that's only because I am defeated. I am, I am defeated. These are my least favorite kinds of bad movies. The ones that are so bad that they're just bad and boring. I will give credit where credit is due. So you must know this film is a real piece of feces when I can't even walk away with one or two things I liked. It takes a real lack of talent to be this draining. You know what the saddest part is? I feel like I spent more time writing and editing this review than the total time that was spent on production for this movie. I'm not even making a joke. I genuinely believe I care more about this review and put in more time compared to the people that shambled this together. And this isn't even one of those movies that is so old that it's kind of charming. In fact, it's quite the opposite. I remember watching the J.J. Abrams TED talk about filmmaking, where he talks about how technology has advanced to the point where anyone and their grandmothers could make a movie if they really wanted to now. And Shark Exorcist is one of the sad, deplorable side effects of that fact. The, the, the most incredible sort of mystery, I think, is now the question of what comes next because it is now uh, democratized. So now the creation of media is, it's everywhere. The stuff that I was lucky and, and, and begging for to get when I was a kid is now ubiquitous. And so there's an amazing sense of, of, of opportunity out there when I think of the filmmakers who exist out there now who would have been silenced, you know, who, who have been silenced in the past. Um, it's a very exciting thing. I used to say in classes and you know, lectures and stuff that uh, to someone who wants to write, go write, do your thing, it's free, no, you don't need permission to go write. But now I can say, go make your movie. There's nothing stopping you. 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 I like to get wet. But I don't mind making it my mission to make these people pay and own up for the crimes against film they've committed. It might take me until I'm 146 years old, but by crikey, I will train my children to join me in the search if need be. Obviously, this film is at the bottom of the list in terms of quality. And if you'd like to see a full list of the search for the worst movies, an internet hyperlink can be discovered in the description that will take you to a handy IMDb list with every movie I've reviewed on there in correct order. Make sure you check out the trying to watch for this episode to see my initial reaction alongside the search for the worst playlist, which has hours more content for you to enjoy. And as far as what movie's coming next, I'm actually going to leave this up to you to decide. That's right. If you click the card button, you can bring up a little voting system. System. The movie with the most votes will obviously be the winner, and I'll have to endure the inevitable awfulness and add it to the search. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!